Welcome to the last set of news. My name is Rob, and I got to tell you, there is bullish news all around. And the story we're going to talk about as far as uh, Google and Tezos, it just shows you just the amount of interest that we're seeing from these enormous tech giants. And also, if you stick with the project you believe in, sometimes things just work out. So what I'm talking about is that there was an article that uh, just came out a couple hours ago, which said that Google Cloud to become the validator on Tezos network. Very simply, Google Cloud's corporate customers will be able to deploy Tezos nodes in order to build Web3 apps on the network. That's great. The platform, uh, Google itself, uh, they've already uh, done a lot of things with uh, Ethereum projects as far as node hosting. And they also became a validator on Solana. And really all this says to me is that if we're going to have Google come in and they're going to place their bets on these different uh, crypto blockchains, they don't just go with one and go, this is the one, this is it. They kind of spread things around and diversify. And for me, that's, uh, that makes sense. And on top of that, if we take a look at Tezos, I mean, how did that work out for the price action? Because usually in bear markets, good news doesn't do anything. And bad news, you know, sinks everything, uh, you know, massively. But as we you know, shift around, I'm not saying we're in a bull market, but I thought down this was interesting, is that in the last 24 hours, Bitcoin's down 3%, Ethereum 3.5%. Actually, everything's pretty much down across the board until we get down to number 48, which is Tezos. In the last 24 hours, they're up 5%. They're one of the few because of that good news. And then also, I will have you note in the last week or so, it's been up 20%. So if you don't think somebody knew something uh, that was going to happen as far as this announcement, think again. I think there's people that uh, are insiders that may have known something. And uh, that's just, I believe, just how it is. Also, on top of that, Google, they haven't just picked up uh, Ethereum projects and Tezos and uh, Solana. Don't, don't forget, they've also picked up Theta. And Theta, if you haven't been around for a while, it's one of those products that was just heavily talked about in 2021, a little bit 2022. And it kind of fell off because they're doing a bunch of work, a lot of different upgrades. And again, remember, uh, Google came in and they are an enterprise validator for Theta. Now, again, uh, you have to understand I'm very biased. I own Theta. I've, I've held on to it for a little bit of time. I sold some, but still have a, a good amount. But again, when we take a look at these projects, pay attention to the projects that are building in the bear because they will crush it in the bull. And the next question I, I would I, I would get from people uh, when we talk about crypto products is Rob, but isn't it true that I mean Google will just you know create uh, their own different blockchains and and uh, kind of just push the existing projects aside? Well, obviously no. But remember, that's not what Google and big industries do. What they do is they start to buy up things and build on things because they don't have time. They just want to, you know, get to be number one first. And Google, uh, they're the company that's from Statista. Don't forget, I mean, this is their last 10 biggest acquisitions. And one of those is Motorola for $12.5 billion. Nest, which is kind of like a, a competitor to Ring, $3.2 billion. DoubleClick, $3.1. YouTube, $1.6 billion and so on and so forth. So again, these types of companies just start to buy up everything and you know, bring it really home. Look at what Facebook did. In 2005, all they started to do was just buy up everybody in sight. And of course, they were spending billions upon billions of dollars to become the number one social network. And I think that's what Google is doing. They see the writing on the wall. They're like, we want to be a part of this because Web2 is all about centralization and putting everything in one spot. Uh, moving forward for Web3, it's decentralized everything, making payments as easy as possible and putting people in power of their data instead of these en enormous conglomerates just running amok with all of our data and doing whatever they do. So that's what we have for, for that piece. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And also some good news. I like this part. Voyager. So there was a little bit of trepidation coming about with uh, Voyager as they started to sell off or started to be picked up by Binance because they went into, uh, they were insolvent because they made a, a terrible business decision where they sold uh, essentially $630, $640 million for an uncollateralized loan to these people named Three Arrows Capital. And for some reason, they thought that was a great idea. Well, obviously it wasn't. And of course, we've we've been languishing uh, 
in, in the field just waiting for something to happen. And now Binance comes along and says, okay, we'll pick you, pick it up. Unfortunately, there's going to be a little bit of a haircut depending on who you talk to, the different data points. Correct me in the comment section. It's like a haircut of between like 40 and 60%, which I'm like, great, as long as we get something back. And this is what's happening. So Binance is coming along and said, we're going to buy it. And what we had to do is, is actually vote on this. And 97% of creditors have so far voted in favor of the plans with hours left to go in the vote. This is what the attorney said. So just to bring this home, uh, the attorney came forth and said, we're on track and don't anticipate any obstacles and expect to be before your honor again next Thursday. And she was referring to an intention to confirm the plan on March 2nd, which will be next week. So once we can confirm the plan, then we're gonna see how long it is before we actually get some of our funds back and what that entails. I will do a deep dive into that, but all you gotta know is things are moving in the right direction and I'm glad this is behind us because it was a huge, huge mistake on their part. And that's what we have. Also, some more somewhat bullish news, but uh, what's kind of interesting is that I kept hearing these stories about how, uh, uh, Coinbase uh, beat the earnings report and how great it was. And I'm like, is it that great? So this was the story. Stocks uh, making the biggest moves pre-market. One of those is Coinbase. And the reason why they actually jumped up, and it wasn't that much, shares of crypto exchange rose more than 1% after Coinbase reported a smaller than expected loss for the fourth quarter. So it actually rose because they didn't go down so badly. Coinbase's losses uh, was 2.46 per share on 625, 629 million of revenue, expecting a loss of 2.55 per share on the 590 million. So they didn't do great, but they did better than expected. And of course, subscription and service revenue helped offset a quarter over quarter decline in trading volumes. And also that service revenue, uh, one of those, about 20% is staking. That's why you're going to see a big uh, argument between them and the SEC as Kraken got shut down for staking, which unfortunately is now 20% of the business model for Coinbase. So we'll see how it all plays out. And then lastly, now there's an article that I thought was interesting. And I'll link in the description so you can read the whole thing. I'm just going to give you the, the, the bullet points. And it talks about, this is from uh, Boyd Cohen. And he says, I'm American, but my crypto startup won't be. This is the thing I've been fearing, which I think is is uh, is justified, is that the new crypto products that are starting up, they're not going to be here. They're going to go offshore. Why? Because the SEC can't get their act together. And he says, and it's, it's a good point. It's he says, it's ironic that companies like Kraken and Coinbase, which have been operating illegally in the U.S. for years, are in compliance. But then you got somebody like FTX. They made massive gains just by gaming the system and moving offshore. So it's just interesting that the SEC is, they're, they're enforcing by regulation. Unfortunately, they're not growing the industry as we just saw what's going on in Web3 and all the different developments for the big customers. And these customers, they're not going to be in the US. They're going to move off. And then this was the thing I will have to, I'm going to verify in a second. He says, I can tell you from firsthand experience as a crypto founder myself, every single lawyer we have met with has advised us against considering the U.S. due to the regulatory uncertainty. And that's true. We uh, purchased the rights for uh, that game Flappy Bird, and we're going to bring it to Web3. And essentially what's going to happen is that nobody, I mean, you're going to be able to play it on uh, Web2 because we're going to launch it through um, Android and iOS, but you're not going to be able to do anything as far as crypto-wise uh, here in the U U.S. because regulatory uncertainty. So again, America gets left behind because of some bad decisions. And that's it. That's it for today in the news. Just a couple of things to note. And that is that uh, tomorrow we usually do not financial advice with me, Guy and Ben from Coin Bureau and into the Cryptoverse. Guy has a previous engagement, some kind of like Shark Tank thing through Binance. And uh, he's going to be hosting that one. So that has to be tomorrow. So we're going to move it to Friday but the exact same time. So I'll let everybody know about that here on the channel and on Twitter. And then also today is Wednesday, tomorrow on Thursday, I'm going to do a meetup again at uh, the San Juan Smokehouse. Uh, I'll put the link in the description. You can find it if you're here in Puerto Rico. And that'll be from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Great place, great food, and uh, better drinks. And then lastly, just so everybody knows, I'll be doing, I'll be firing up the Dan DJ channel again 
as we review Alaska Gold Rush, uh, which is a play to win model uh, type of game, which I find uh, pretty interesting how they're going to do things. But that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, uh, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive, but that is the news today. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.